Good afternoon, everyone. Serena, are we ready to get uh, this started? Got a thumbs up? Very good. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Brian McCown. I'm the AVP of Mortgage Operations uh, for the mortgage team here at Michigan First Credit Union. Thank you for taking a little time out uh, to talk to us today. Uh, we've got a really timely topic about cash out refinancing. So um, we're going to start in a second, and um, we are going to go through, just as a couple reminders, um, everyone uh, on the call except the speakers is going to be muted. Our call is recorded today, uh, and if you have any questions, feel free. We've got the chat box open. The chat box is monitored, so any questions you have, just fire away in there. Um, we have you muted just so we can uh, get through the content. We've got everyone's cameras off except the speakers. Uh, again, just for the performance of Zoom. Sometimes uh, it, it can get a little finicky and we just wanna make sure that uh, you get a clear presentation of us. So um, again, thank you for joining. Uh, I'm gonna moderate everything today. Uh, we've got a couple speakers that we'll introduce here in a second, Bob Eves and Logan Peters, uh, both team members here at Michigan First Credit Union. And our topic today, again, I said is very timely. It's about cash out refinancing strategies, short-term versus long-term. and you know, there's there is a, a, a lot of home appreciation out there. So there's value in people's homes. We heard from the Fed yesterday that they are starting the process of lowering rates, uh, which will trickle down to mortgage. And we won't get too deep into into the Fed. But it's again, it's a timely topic because we're, we're entering a period in the mortgage market in which uh, refinancing and specifically cash out refinancing is going to become uh, very helpful to a lot of folks. So we'll talk through that. We'll talk through a couple tips and tricks. Uh, we'll wrap up with some closing remarks uh, in a Q&A. But as we're going through here, again, feel free, type the questions in the chat. And if we don't address them uh, in, in some of our prepared remarks, we'll certainly try and get those and filter them in, or we'll provide answers uh, right there in the chat. So uh, I want to kick it off by introducing Bob Eves, uh, loan officer here at Michigan First Mortgage. So Bob, welcome. And I'll give you a couple minutes to talk about yourself. Well, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being on the call. As Brian said, very timely topic as far as cash out refinancing. Uh, here at the credit union, I've been blessed to be in the business for now coming up on 40 years. I've seen interest rates as high as 18% rates down in the ones and twos and threes. So what we want to do is walk through the process use our expertise, know that we want to be your trusted advisor. And I've been able to handle refinances and purchases for many years. And it's always a pleasure to work through the best solution for the borrower. Great, thank you very much, Bob. And let's turn it over to Logan to introduce himself. Logan. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining the call today. Uh, very excited to be here. Great opportunity. Uh, I've been working for credit unions in Michigan for over 10 years. I've been with Michigan First now for a little over three years, and currently I work as a consumer underwriter. Very good. Uh, so let's, yeah, I, uh, nice to meet both of you. Um, I see we've got, uh, uh, actually, we just uh, the participant list is growing. So again, thanks everyone for joining us. And um, why don't we just jump right in? Um, we've got a series of questions uh, and topics that we're going to go through. So, um, Bob, I'm going to start with you. So our topic today is cash out refinancing strategies. So why don't we just start with the very basics? And what is cash out refinancing? Thank you, Brian. So a cash out refinance would be for an individual that currently owns their home or condo property, and they want to utilize the benefits of the equity in the property to help with their financial goals and needs. So people look at cash out refinances a couple of different ways we're going to get into loan to value, uh, credit requirements, but a cash out refinance is basically taking money out of a property you own for a specific financial need. All right. And, and I think we're, as you know, pulling money out of your home, uh, it, it's one of the biggest, um, uh, home ownership is one of the biggest ways that we can grow generational wealth in this country. And and with that, um, 
your house, you can access some money that you have made built up in your home in the form of equity. And we've heard the term equity a lot. We hear it on TV a lot. And uh, Logan, I just wanted to walk you through. Let's, again, kind of, we'll start with the very basics. When we hear equity and we hear people talk about equity, what is equity? Um, equity is defined as your asset minus your liability against it. Okay. And so, you know, to, to look at the case of, uh, you know, your, your home in particular, uh, if I wanted to determine, okay, what's the equity in my home, how would I go about figuring that out? Well, you would use a resource, maybe say Zillow. Uh, you would need to kind of get a, an idea of the fair market value of what the home would sell at in the current market conditions today. And then you would need to take a look at your current liability against it. And so when we say liability, we're referring to your first mortgage, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. um, so if you owe um, 100,000 against the property, but it's worth 200,000, we would say that you have about 100,000 in equity at that moment. Okay. And you mentioned, and that's and that's a great way to think of it. You know what what what's the value? Hopefully, it's much higher. And and how much have you borrowed against? And that difference there is what you have access to. You talked a little bit about um, Zillow getting an estimate of your home. Um, what are some of the ways that you know? I think Zillow is probably one of the more popular ones. There's estimate. Um, there are other tools out there, but you know, is where should where should someone on the call start to kind of figure out? Um, how they can determine value. What are their options with that? Uh, I would definitely say Zillow and its contemporaries are a great place to start. Um, mm -hmm. I would say, if, if it were me, I would only ever want to do a traditional or more sophisticated appraisal if I was going to be doing something with the equity. So in the case of if I was seriously considering either selling the property and I wanted a good idea of where I stood, or if I wanted to know um, what would be a, an appropriate amount to draw out. Okay. And obviously, if you're if you're in the process of uh, borrowing against it or taking cash out, the lender would have to do some more formal evaluation, correct? Yes, absolutely. Maybe. But for for folks and everyone out there, you know, Zillow, uh, some things like that, you can log onto that right now. Well, <laughs> after this call, not this second, maybe twelve, <laughs> yes. twelve thirty one. But you can log in and you can use those to get a range, correct, of of what's the estimated value there. So. Let's say someone, you know, someone on the call does that. They go in, they look at Zillow. They say, oh, wow, you know, my, you know, I know what my mortgage is. I know what I've got. Um, or if you're fortunate, you don't have a mortgage. So then equity is whatever the value is. Exactly. Um, you know, so you look on Zillow and, and you get a figure and say, I do have some equity in there. I might want to do a cash out. So Bob, loan programs have parameters in them. So can you talk a little bit about what some of the parameters are with a cash out refinance? Absolutely. So when we sit down with a borrower, we're going to look at, just like Brian and Logan said, what is the value of the house? How much of anything is currently owned on the property? And very importantly, anybody, any lender can, I don't want to say talk you into a product, but we dive into it to find out what your goal is. Short-term, long-term strategies. How long do you think you're going to take the money out for. Met with a member this morning, thinking of fixing the house up, selling it within a year to 18 months. With a mortgage loan, a mortgage loan is very beneficial because you're looking at a fixed rate, 15, 20, 30 years, but there are closing costs involved. Long-term, that is often beneficial. Short-term, maybe not. Maybe we team up with Logan and his team to look at equity products. As a cash out refinance, I will always look at how much, if anything, is owed on the property. Let's go to Logan's example. House is worth 200,000, you owe 100,000 and your current rate is 3% and you're looking to take $20,000 out. It would be as a trusted advisor, my best advice to look at a home equity product to leave the current loan intact. So we look at what are the needs, what are the desires for the refinance. If you're looking to pay off credit cards, car loans, we can win the battle, potentially lose the war that we might lower your payment dramatically, but realize we might be stretching that out over 30 years. So 
every situation's a little different. Every option's a little different. That's why we'll bounce things off between mortgage equity products to find the best fit, if that answers the question. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think um, a, a couple, maybe more specific, but to a point you just said, you know, one of the one of the good points of the situation we have at, Mir at Michigan First is, you know, it, it, we don't have one option. We've got a multitude of options and we've got teams working and, and you both have led to this. It's, it's a very education driven approach. We really want to make sure everyone has all the right information before making that decision. Ultimately, it's it's the homeowner's decision on what they want to do. Uh, so we need to help prepare them, as you both have said. Um, is there, Bob, is there a, a general limit? So can I take out all of my equity in a great, property? Great question. And to lend to that, we want you to know what I always tell my borrowers, you will know the who, what, why, where, when. Generally, I require sitting down face to face just because of the uh, enormity of the um, importance of this. So we look at it a little different. So that's a great question. On a mortgage, we'll take the value of the house, let's say the 200000 As a rule, generally, we'll go up to 80% of the value, potentially 85, depending upon the loan product. But Let's look at the 80%. So on a hundred, a $200,000 house, we're generally looking at total loan up to 160. Now, I don't want to step on Logan's um, toes, but in the home equity product, he'll talk about loan to value because mortgage, we're generally at a 80% or lower. Home equity, we might be able to go higher. So that is also part of the conversation. Yeah, and, and again, that's a that's a really good point, and and I think an important distinction. Um, while it is, if I own my home, if it, it is my money that I can do with what I want. But you know, when you think about uh, you know the next question, well, why could it only go up to for a mortgage? Why could it only go up to that? I, I think one of the the simplest solutions, if we think back to 2010, 11, and 12, as home prices decreased, we don't want people to be to lose their equity and end up owing more on the house um, because they did a cash out than it's actually worth. And we want to make sure that, you know, we have some safeguards in place so we don't put someone in a bad position. Is, would that be pretty accurate? Yes. Uh, on that? Yes. Yeah. So when trying to decide, we've got a couple options to, to, to do the cash out refinance. What are some of the pros and cons versus, you know, in doing a cash out, perhaps maybe versus a, uh, uh, um, uh, a home equity. Well, I think if, again, not to step on Logan's toes, for a mortgage, uh, as I had the member this morning, what are your needs? What are you looking to do with it? What mm -hmm. is the horizon you're looking at? So we really drill down to what are you looking to do? If you're looking to pay something off, that individual is looking to take money out for home improvements, pay off debts, list mm -hmm. the home and sell it within 18 months. Again, the mortgage closing cost compared to home equity products, we'll get into the specifics with a member when we meet. But if we're looking at long term, I feel that it's in the best interest. Money is still relatively cheap. Take the mortgage, lock in the long term fixed rate and enjoy that. You can always pay extra. You can pay it off. Pretty much every loan product that we originate is serviced by Michigan First, which is very important. So if you're looking at shorter term, interest rate is not as critical in a short window. If I can mm -hmm. pay less cost to get the loan, and I, even though I'm paying a higher interest rate, but it's for a short period of time, maybe a home equity product would be better. Long term, let me know my payment, let me have a fixed rate, and let me have the flexibility of paying extra whenever I want, then a mortgage would be a better solution. So uh, really important to get the feel from the borrower, what are their goals? What are they looking to do? And how long do they think they want to keep the money? If you're looking to sell the home within a year to two years, a mortgage may or may not be the best product. Long-term, it might be the best solution. Yeah, a lot to consider. You know, and it, it's it's not as simple as I have equity. Let's get it. There's lots of options. 
which is good because it can fit, as you said, and you both have said, individual situations. So, um, Logan, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the uses of the cash out refinancing. And, you know, I know we get questions, you know, you do as well. You know, can I take cash out? Can I pay bills? Like, what can I use the money for that I pull out of the home? Well, Brian, um, you can, as the borrower, you can ideally utilize the funds in any ways uh, you see fit. I would say some of the more common ways we see it utilized, I'm going to say the biggest one is probably. I think we're freezing up for a second there. Yeah, I think Logan froze up. Yeah. Right at the right at the the good part of the statement, unfortunately. Um, you know, Bob, I'm going to ask you to kind of jump in, and you and I can and kind of jump in while he gets reconnected. So, apologize to everyone for the the tech glitch here. Um, but so, yeah, what he was starting to go on, what we can use our equity for? Exactly. So, I think that is one of the confusing parts. Is mm -hmm. is there a difference what I can use the money for in a home equity product or a mortgage? Mm -hmm. With with a high level, generally, no, we're borrowing money. It's just what is the best product. Generally, the most common things that a borrower will use the money for is to consolidate debt, credit cards, car loans, other loans, home improvements. We see a lot of those. Um, you can take cash out to build up a reserve. Some of our borrowers will consolidate debt, take yeah. out money for future purchases and put a little money on the side just to have that rainy day fund. All right, thank you. Logan, we jumped in. I know we had a little tech glitch there. Um, so uh, we see you back. Um, you were, uh, I think we tried to fill in the gaps, so but I wanna go back to you. You you were, um, you hit the you hit the right good part. Unfortunately, we had, uh, <laughs> I think the internet, and internet uh, gremlin. Hit us. So I, I want to go back to you. You you were you were about to you teed up exactly what we can use the the equity for. What can we use for the the cash out? Some right. of the purposes. And as I was saying, it's not just consolidation that might be one of the more common uses. But let's say you had a business opportunity or an investment you were pursuing, uh, utilizing the equity in the home would be an excellent opportunity for that. Or maybe you want to go back to school. You don't want to take out a bunch of student loans or you know that you're going back to school for a specific purpose, uh, maybe one semester. Uh, maybe it's not worth doing a, a student loan in that case. But if you had, say, an existing line of credit against the home or you uh, had a lot of equity, you were you know, uh, it would be advantageous for you to perhaps consider that as an option as well. Okay. Um, and yeah, as you look, I guess it, it, it's really, it's up to you. Yes. You know, I guess with whatever option you pick, as long as you qualify under the, the loan parameters, the money's yours. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you talked a little bit, we, we did talk about debt consolidation. And, you know, I know that there's different, types of debt, short-term debt, long-term debt. Um, I wondered if you could kind of differentiate those um, and and talk a little bit about um, how that would work, you know, maybe the pros and cons benefits, how that would work under a cash out, looking at the different types of debt that there is. In consumer loans, I, I would define short-term debt as any loan that is amortized on a 12-month or shorter basis. Um, so these might be like a payday loan or a, uh, a, a small unsecured cash loan from the credit union, for example. Uh, mm -hmm. Anything longer than that, I tend to consider long-term debt. That's going to be like your car loans. Uh, or a credit card, which is you know ideally indefinitely open so long as it's managed properly. Mortgages, obviously, those are going to be long term, like an existing home equity if you had one. Um, I would say typically short term debt is going to be unsecured, and your long term loans are going to be typically secured with some kind of asset. Okay, to a home or a car, RV, boat, something, exactly. uh, things like that. Um, generally, you know doing a cash out for long-term debt. And I, I think the three of us, we've seen a lot of, like you said, debt consolidation, um, unless you're maybe doing renovations or you know improvements to the home. Um, if you do have longer term debt and maybe it drives the payment down, Bob touched on this, um, You know, generally what's the thought around doing a cash out 
to pay off or consolidate long-term debt? What would you what would you look at there or things well, to consider? I think in the case of long-term debt, I, I generally wouldn't advocate consolidating maybe a car. Like if you had three, four years left on your on your vehicle, I probably wouldn't advocate for that, especially stretching that term out for as long as the mortgage might be, whether you're doing cash out and it's a full 30 or even a home equity mm-hmm. or going up to 180 or 50, 180 months or 15 years. But let's say you had an RV and, you know, RVs tend to lose value very quickly. There's not a, a there's not a large market for used RVs. Most people would rather uh, prefer to buy new if they could. So what if you were uh, in a position where you had a significant amount of negative equity in that RV loan, you may want to consolidate that. You may want to get out from under it at not only a lower interest rate, um, but then you would own the asset free and clear and you'd, you'd have that consolidated payment, which is a lower interest rate and probably improve your cash flow as well. Okay. Yeah, and I... I... I, I like that question because um, there's a lot to consider. Again, as you know, we take the education first approach. And and Bob, I want to talk about you know on on mortgage. We tend to look because long mortgages are extended over longer terms. What are some What are some strategies with the mortgage that where you know just to kind of reiterate you know maybe add to what Logan was saying you know using um, using the cash out refinance a 15 year or 30 year. What are some strategies there, Bob? No, you're absolutely right. So what we want to do is always do the best thing. So we've seen over the years, borrowers will pay off credit cards, will pay off a short-term car loan like Logan said. And that's great. You're going to greatly increase your cash flow monthly. Mm-hmm. But what we want to look at is you're also going to be paying interest over 30 years if you don't prepay it sooner. What you want to look at is what is the spending habits also. So if you pay that debt off and then go back out and charge up the credit cards, we have to be careful on that. So in that case, we meet with the member to look at, maybe we don't want to stretch it out for a full 30 years. Maybe we want to look at a 15 year. So with a mortgage, I have a 30 year term. I have a 20 year term. I have a 15 year term. So we have options to look at what best suits the financial goals of the borrower. Mm-hmm. And you, we've talked about paying off, um, we've talked about paying off short-term debt or credit cards. Logan, what's the, if we pay off, we pay an account down to zero, are they closed? Or do, do we have to close those accounts out or can we leave them open once we pay off the balance? Uh, well, Brian, typically speaking, if it's an installment loan, once it's paid off, it's going to clear itself out. However, if we're in the case of consolidating credit cards, as you mentioned, those will actually typically remain open, um, especially if they're an unsecured card. Okay. So if I paid off, you know, I've got uh, the X debt. I borrowed something from Michigan first. It's a 12-year term and it's a defined term. And once I paid off, it will just close itself. That is correct. Um, yes. So Okay. So- even so, even if I pay off, I've got two credit cards. I pay them down to zero. I don't have to close those necessarily. Typically speaking, no. Okay. Those will remain open, and you can continue to utilize them in the future. Okay, very good. Um, I wanted to end. Uh, you know, we're we're almost out on time. So, um, Bob, I'm going to go back to you. Uh, you know, from a from a risk standpoint. Is there, you know, either from mortgage risk, qualifying risk, things like that? Are there some things to keep in mind uh, with the cash out refinance? Yes. Great question. So on any loan, if somebody calls in and asks what the interest rate is, honestly, I can't tell you and I would be doing you a disservice if I did that. So interest rates are going to be based on a number of risk factors. They're going to be based on If it's a cash out, what is the loan to value? So the more equity we keep in the property after taking out the new loan, the better the pricing, better the interest rate. Also credit score. FHA will allow us to consider a credit score down to 580. Conventional will allow us to go down to 620. That can affect the pricing. And we also have what we're blessed to offer to help our members is a portfolio loan product that is an in-house product that if the loan does not meet conventional FHA guidelines, and there's a good underlying reason for 
in many cases, the credit score being below 580 or 620, we can often do that loan. So I think it's important. Cash out refinance seems like a very simple idea, simple topic, but like Brian and Logan alluded to, it's a very involved uh, discussion to make sure you get the best product. But yes, risk is based on loan size, loan to value, credit score, debt to income, many, many factors that we walk through the borrower with. Yeah, and so just, I know we're gonna wrap up here. I'm gonna kick it back to you guys in a second, but just that just that, that last point, you know, anytime we talk about loans, you know, there's lots of ways to get a rate, but really what works for, for you? What works for the, the borrower in their situation? What's your budget? You know, we may be able to qualify off one thing, but um, what is your personal budget? How much do you have allocated for your house payment or for other payments like that? So I think that's a huge part of the conversation. And, and uh, certainly both of you have talked about that educational piece. So it's really beyond the rate that you want to consider before you dial it in and, uh, you know, and, 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 and do the loan and pick out that rate. So um, I do just want to say, let's, let's, I'm going to kick it back to each of you, just three quick takeaways for the, the audience here, which we appreciate them uh, uh, being with us uh, for the half hour here. So Bob, what are, what are some takeaways from the mortgage side? Well, let me answer. I think I saw in the chat uh, box, the difference between a rate and term and a cash out. Let me touch on that. We're sure. on this call looking at cash out, meaning you are taking out more than you owe or a refinance just to pay what you currently owe is still a refinance, different option. But I think what I'd like to take the have the members take away is we are a not-for-profit. Our sole mission is to provide, provide the highest level of quality service to the member to get the best product for them, not for the lender. Like Logan said, many lenders will require you to close out a credit card if you pay it off. We do not. So I think the value is sitting down with Logan, sitting down with me, knowing we're going to act in your best interest to find the best product for you. Excellent. No, I appreciate that. Logan, what are a couple of final thoughts uh, for the audience today? Okay. You I would really like for the membership to know, come to us with any questions. We are the experts. We will assist you. We will review your situation. We'll talk through all of the options and we're going to find the best path forward for you, the borrower, and how we'll best be able to serve your needs and qualify you as a potential borrower. Great. Uh, you know, I, both of you gentlemen, I, I appreciate that greatly. Um, I want to thank everyone that's here. Uh, as they both said, you know, and the top of this slide says it all, we're, we're ready to help you. We really do want to know your situation um, and, and get to know what your goals are uh, financially, how we can be of assistance uh, and, and, and offer a variety of tools in the toolkit, so to speak. So if you are interested in learning more, if you look from the mortgage side, we have a, a general information email address, info at michiganfirstmortgage.com. If you feel you're ready to, to start the, the mortgage journey, you can go to michiganfirst.com slash mortgage and talk to any of our qualified loan officers that are out there. You can call in 800-664-3828, select mortgage, and one of our loan officers will be on the phone with you within a ring or two uh, to, to talk with you there. Uh, if you want to reach out to Bob directly, uh, this is his uh, cell phone, I believe, uh, 586 549-9525 or reeves at michiganfirstmortgage.com. And uh, Logan, if you had questions for him, lpeters at michiganfirst.com. Uh, so again, uh, if you are interested in more information, reach out there. I do want to point out with, with usually every loan uh, or home ownership journey, uh, there's always an insurance piece. And again, to help serve you better, we have our own insurance agency, Michigan First Insurance Agency. It can assist you with homeowners coverage. We will shop with over 40 carriers to make sure that you find the right savings and coverage that you want. We can bundle home and auto together for even more savings. So if you're interested there, go to michiganfirst.com slash insurance or give them a call uh, at the number on the screen, 866-386-2216. And uh, you'll get a quote today. Uh, we are at the bottom of the, the hour right now. I want to thank everyone for calling. Thank you for the questions in the chat. Uh, please reach out if you have any other questions. 
You can view this presentation if you want to watch it again at michiganfirst.com slash mortgage seminars. And everyone have a wonderful Thursday. Thank you for joining us. And we look forward to serving you soon. Thank you.